we take a look at uh, different data. One of the three that were published this week is, is from Pfizer, and it showed that the efficacy dropped 6% every two months in terms of symptoms. But the critical point is that the severe illness is still 96.7%. So it, it's not degrading, it still holds up. Yeah, so we should be clear that if you look at vaccines over history, the point of all vaccines is to prevent severe disease, right? There is no, there are very few vaccines that are near 100% effective. We try to prevent, on the one hand, the most serious side effects of death and hospitalization, but the vaccines are also meant to reduce the impact on society. I always talk about how the idea of the vaccines are, if you, if you lit a match in the woods, there's enough vaccine efficacy if the whole forest doesn't start to go on fire. So the point here is to get as many people vaccinated as we can to protect the masses, which has an economic effect, a social benefit, but perhaps most importantly, to keep people from dying, to keep people from getting hospitalized. So yes, the vaccines are profoundly effective. We are seeing a wane in, in the immunogenicity and their effect over time. Um, that's to be expected. However, you know, I think we are still waiting to see what the impact is on breakthrough infections. And that's why the Pfizer data out of Israel is so interesting. And that's what I want to get to right now is, is taking a look at Israel. That's one of the reports, part of the data that they're going to be looking at today. They released it earlier this month. We know they're like a little bit ahead of us on this. Um, so talk to me about this real world reduction in infections that they're seeing. Sure, I should note that the reason that we get so much data out of Israel is that they have, it's either four or five main healthcare organizations or HMOs, but with a common sort of electronic medical record. So our ability to see what's happening at a, at a population level is, is important there. So what we know in the study of well over a million people, a large study that looks at breakthrough infections, they looked at whether or not you had a breakthrough infection with COVID and whether or not you received um, a booster dose or not. And they began their booster program in earnest a couple of weeks ago with people 16 and Older. And again, I mentioned this earlier, but what they found is that if you were vaccinated with that third dose, that booster dose, you were 11 times less likely to get sick. And you were 20 times, like 19.8 times, less likely to be hospitalized or die. So I think where we have focused this in the last few months on antibody data and other lab data, here we have some real world data that suggests that the third dose provide significant protection against death, hospitalization, and all comers disease. Now, we also know that they're less diverse than the U.S. When you take a look, you know, obviously it's a smaller population in general, but it's, uh, it's also, you know, different. I think that's certainly true. How, however, you know, the, the biology of COVID is the same if it infects, you know, folks here in the U.S., uh, in Israel, in South America, around the world. I think what we certainly know is there are some socioeconomic uh, factors that impact uh, the imp impact the disease itself. If you are unable to access care, if you are, um, you know, non-English speaking and have difficulty getting into a vaccine site. So I think that those factors are probably a little less translatable here to the U.S., but I think physiologically the data should be the same. And I think there's a lot we can learn from this information. All right. When